Hi. As you can see, it's a beautiful sunny morning here in the Algarve, and um, I'm just loving it. I got managed to get in some gardening before before breakfast this morning, which is quite amazing. But um, today we want to talk because it's really tough right now to go out and take videos of um, you know the towns and everything. And I'm going to continue making videos of all the towns like Silves and Monchique and all these other towns, beautiful towns. But um, it's really tough right now to do it in lockdown because we're in heavy lockdown and um, you're not allowed to do certain things. I mean, I can still go out I have a, because I, cause I'm allowed to because of my work. So I can, but it's just it's been really difficult. So what I've decided to do is make a video about taxes today. And <clears throat> taxes are obviously very important, awfully boring for me, <laughs> but they're not boring for my wife because she's worked in as an international financial advisor for the last, I don't know, 10 years. And she's doing really well. I mean, she actually got into the Publico a newspaper, which is a, a massive nationwide newspaper. And they phoned her up and asked her to to um, have an interview because she's such a well-renowned expert in her space. So I thought, well, why not sit down with Manuela, my wife, and ask her a little bit about the tax advantages of, of moving to Portugal. And in particular, the NHR, which is the a thing called the non-habitual residency. So a lot of you have expressed interest in this. And I think it makes a lot of sense. If you're coming to Portugal, you need to know how much money you're going to save. And, and it's, a, it's a big driver for a lot of people because... Sure, you might be able to save a lot of money in, in other parts of the world. In I don't know, I don't, I'm not good at this, so maybe Panama or something like that. But you don't have the facilities that you have here being right within Europe. So that's why Portugal is super attractive. And that's why so many people are coming here. So hopefully this will help you find out a little bit more about the tax advantages of moving to Portugal. So here's my wife. <music> Manuela, oh, we've been dying to do this for so long, <laughs> and I, just it's amazing to finally get you on camera. Thanks, my love. I'm actually really proud of my wife. She's um, she's doing amazing things in the in the financial services industry, financial management industry, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> no, but it's husband and wife. It's just bizarre, isn't it? So can you can you give us an indication of how you help people through your work every day? <laughs> I, I need to stop laughing. I promise you this is not what we do on our normal Saturday afternoon. So, um, well, What yeah. do we do on normal Saturday well, afternoon? Well, I'm not usually interviewed by my husband on a Saturday afternoon. But there we go. <laughs> um, so I just need to focus here. Um, so how do you help people on a day-to-day -day basis right. in your work? Okay, well... Um, so I work for a very prestigious uh, wealth and financial management company that has been around for about now 35 years. Um, and uh, what we do on a daily basis is we help uh, people structure their finances correctly. And by doing this, we save them huge amounts of money. Um, I know that moving to a different country is very, very exciting. But also sometimes uh, a little bit overwhelming. And I mean, it's different culture, different language. All of these things are sometimes quite challenging. But we need to be very aware that you're moving to a different country. There's different tax laws. There's different fiscal laws. Um, and when we are dealing with people, we are looking at the whole picture. So uh, we give holistic advice. We, do a bes we, we offer a bespoke service and we need to take into account uh, that every person's needs are different, their goals are different, their attitude towards risk, and we need to um, protect their capital and give them peace of mind. So basically this is what we do. Thank you. Okay, I, so I just want to know, when you're talking about the people and your clients, what yeah. nationalities do you work with on the main? Oh, well, different types of nationalities, British, American, South African, Swedish, Portuguese. It's not really about the nationality. Um, it's more about the residency. So um, if you are uh, wanting to become or looking at becoming or are already a Portuguese resident, then we take, we, I take them on as a client. So it's not so much about the nationality. It's about the residency. 
Okay, so because mainly people are obviously going to, that you're working with have uh, are applying for, for residency in Portugal, right? Yes, or looking at applying, yes. Because you can't help them if they're not tax residents in Portugal. Well, no, not, not, not true. We, we can help them, but it's, it's more difficult to serve as someone that is not local, is not here. I mean, the company I work with, we are an international company. We have a footprint in about 14 different countries, so we are able to help those people. We're all in different, uh, different companies, uh, different countries. Uh, however, if I'm your financial advisor, I want to be able to service you locally and I know about the local laws here it's different if you are living in Australia and I'm here it's quite difficult then to service but talking about that I think it's quite interesting because I think a lot of people might want to they might already have their financial advisors back home um, and then when they come to Portugal they, they sometimes feel well look I've got a relationship with a financial advisor back home can I not use that financial advisor in Portugal and it's probably better if they have a Portuguese financial advisor like you absolutely Absolutely. Even my, my clients, if they are moving country, if they are going to a different country, I always say to them they should be looking for a financial advisor to whichever country they are moving to because they will be able to service them better than I will. And likewise, if they are coming here, they should be looking for a financial advisor in Portugal because I will know more about the, the laws here and how to be able to hold, I'll be able to hold their hand and I'll be able to, to, to help them more than their financial back home, financial advisor back home. I hope you're not holding other people's hands. Well, not literally, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, NHR, the non habitual residency, what is that in a nutshell? Well, in a nutshell, um, it's, it's basically a tax status uh, that you apply for that grants you tax benefits for a period of 10 years. This is it in a nutshell. So this is it, yeah. So I'm just going to turn off your phone because it's irritating me. Gosh, I forgot to do that. There so you can go. Can you just put it on mute? Absolutely. Hey. <laughs> right. So okay. yeah, so in a nutshell, it's a tax status that you apply for. Uh, that grants you tax benefits for a period of 10 years. So that's what it is. Okay, traditionally, I think some people actually believe that you, get, you have to spend zero tax or you, you get into a zero tax bracket with the, with the NHR. Is that true? Uh, yes and no, not completely, though. And this, you need to be careful because some people think they come to Portugal, apply for the NHR, and they pay no tax and that's it on anything. And it's, it's not quite like that. I mean, there are huge advantages, huge benefits uh, with the uh, NHR. And um, I, I mean, I, ca I can highlight the major ones. So the major, major tax benefits. One, for instance, is dividend income. So if this dividend income is from a foreign source, under the NHR scheme, it is exempted. Therefore, you pay no tax. However... There are caveats, and um, depending on the DTA, so on the double taxation agreement, uh, it could be taxed at source. Okay, so, but just as a comparison, if the dividend, if 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 the dividend income uh, comes from a Portuguese source, you would pay twenty eight percent. So just to compare, uh, wow. so yeah, it it, it is huge. Mm. Um, then there is the other the other one is. Um, Pension income. So, pension income in Portugal is taxed uh, according to the Portuguese prog progressive uh, tax rates. So, in Portugal, the, these progressive tax rates, or the bracket starts at 14.5%, and it goes right up to 48%. It's actually quite high, the income tax in Portugal. And um, pension coming from a foreign source in Portugal is taxed at a flat rate of 10% only. So also quite, quite a huge benefit there. And actually, if you'd become a, a tax resident in Portugal before the 1st of April 2020, you'd have actually been able to benefit at a zero uh, percent. But you uh, can't anymore. No, not anymore. So not it's pretty anymore. But now you were mentioning, I think we were talking a little bit earlier about um, people coming from the UK, if they, and they get, their pension gets taxed at about 20%, I think. Yes, that's mm. right. Mm. Okay. So, so obviously you're going to tax 10% here, you're saving 10% tax. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then um, income from employment, so under the NHR, uh, is taxed at a flat rate of 20%, but here again, be careful, there, are, there is a caveat here as well. 
because um, there is a list of eligible occupations. So um, there's also uh, other requirements here, so um, not that straightforward. And then most of the property-related uh, taxes are tax at source. So under the NHR, when it comes into Portugal, you do not pay any tax. So, yeah, so those are really the main ones, but obviously uh, mm. there are others. And so, okay. sorry. <laughs> and then um, also, I mean, the NHR is something that is quite easy to um, to apply for, and, 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 and in terms of requirements, it's quite easy. I mean, the, so the requirements is basically you can't have been a tax resident in the previous five years, and you need to commit to spending at least 183 days in Portugal per tax year. And the tax year here is starts 1st of January to the 31st of December. Correct. Okay, so is there any difference in a person coming from the UK, the USA, any, any country in Europe, or in South Africa, and coming to apply for, for NHR? No, no, not at all. I mean, obviously you need to, be, to become a Portuguese resident, and that, depending on where you're coming from, if you're coming from Europe, obviously it's a much easier process uh, than if you're coming from South Africa or, or the States, or because there you will need a or visa. Or the UK now as well. Or the UK as well, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Um, so, um, but NHR is the same for everyone, and the benefits are the same for everyone. It's just the way that you apply for residency that is different. Okay, now we're talking about visas and things like that. Do you um, have any... Do you have do you, do you do golden visas as well uh, on your job? Um, we don't we don't do it ourselves. We do help people. We, we we can we can tell them the benefits and things. But a visa, a golden visa, should be done by a lawyer. And you've got lawyers. Though. If, if people need to, you can refer people to lawyers as well. Uh, which, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, okay, absolutely. So now um, the last question, my darling, is uh, <laughs> apart from being married to me, what else do you love about the Algarve? Oh, about the Algarve. Well, I mean, um, there is there is a lot that I like about the Algarve. I mean, we have beaches, yet we have the countryside. We can have... I just sorry? Can I just stop you there? Because um, she moved down here because of me. Because I I moved to 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 Portugal, and then we met, and she was living in Lisbon. And you know, you were you were going to work. I think you were crossing the bridge and. It, when, when, at one stage, I think you said it took you an hour and a half to go 11 kilometers. So, like, obviously, there's massive traffic difference between Lisbon and here, right? Absolutely, oh, absolutely, yes. I'd always been uh, a, a city, a city person, and lived in the city. Yeah, and I was living 11, 11 kilometers door to door. So, yeah, I don't miss that that lifestyle anymore. I do, I do enjoy it down here. You enjoy living in the country, listening to all the birds and having uh, mice in the house sometimes. Oh my God, no, not that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I, yeah, we, we we are very lucky, um, and down here in the Algarve, I mean, we have the best of both ends. We, it's, I mean, we have beach, we have country, we have. Um, uh, and yet we're very close to big cities like we're, we're just a few hours away from the big city like Seville in Spain and Lisbon, we, and Lisbon. Yeah. we're a couple of hours from Lisbon um, and, and then we've got the best weather in the country right down in the south we have the no, best because weather because when, when you were living back in Lisbon I remember I think the second week ever or the first time I ever went up to see you it was pouring with rain but it's um, it, yeah. is, it is quite different you know it's yeah. not that far away but you would think it's, uh, it is quite yeah, different from yeah. Lisbon and, yeah. and I mean um, I, I mean I, I wouldn't just focus on um, the Algarve I would say Portugal uh, as a country mm. is, is a beautiful country we have lovely wines and we have good food and we're a, a children and, and pet friendly. But that the, thing that makes me laugh because a lot of people say to me, okay, um, is this town in the Algarve kid friendly? And I'm like, well, everywhere in Portugal is kid friendly. Just, I don't think you can go anywhere and they say no, no children allowed. No, 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 no. Huh? And uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think... I think, yeah, so that doesn't happen in, in Portugal. And anyway, thank you so much. I yeah. really do appreciate it. And it's I nice for finished. you guys to meet my wife. Um, <laughs> I cut her off all the time, which is brilliant. <laughs> I just want to say, though, I, I, I do have to emphasize that I think it's so important that um, 
especially not just in, fin in the finances, but it is very important to always be one step ahead and to be prepared. And if you're thinking of moving countries, you should stop preparing before the move. So it is important to, to just highlight that, that mm -hmm. fact. And um, yeah, and I hope you found it useful. <laughs> no, I certainly found it useful. I really did. So, Hopefully, yeah. I'll get invited again. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And no um, it's uh, it's nice that that you guys can meet my wife because you've <laughs> met my daughter, and now you can meet my <laughs> wife. So thanks, Manuel. Thanks, Nick. Well, thanks for watching. It's really nice to have my wife on. It was wonderful to chat to her all about tax. And as boring as it is, it's very important. And now, we've what we've done is we've built a landing page for her. So it's algarveaddicts.com forward slash Manuela. So you'll find a link in the description along with lots of other links that can help you. If you'd like to get in touch with her, just drop your email in there and I'll introduce you to her over email. Okay. And basically what she does is she takes, she helps everybody, but the majority of her clients have more than 250,000 euros to invest in Portugal. So that's just a guideline. But as I said, she helps everybody. So get in touch with Manuela, Drop your email in and you'll sign up automatically to my email list. If you're, not, if you're already subscribed, that's fine. It won't double up subscribe you. So um, just jump on to algarvaddicts.com forward slash Manuela. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.